It's all right. You made the decision that you want to be a freelance writer. And I got to say, that was a phenomenal decision, by the way, because if you're new to doing stuff online, freelance writing is the easiest way, in my opinion, to start to build a business, to build your skills, to build income, and to build confidence, which is going to allow you to do all sorts of other cool stuff online in the future. But one of the first things that you should be thinking about now that you've decided you want to become a freelance writer, maybe you already are uh, a freelance writer, but this is one of the most important components to whether or not your business is going to be a success, and that is your portfolio website. You got to have a way for people to find you, for people to learn about you, for people to say, hey, I like that person. I want to hire them. So that's what this video is all about. We're going to talk about a freelance portfolio website and specifically how to choose a theme and a look for your site that's gonna help you achieve the goals that you have for your site, which is to make money and bring in new clients, while also not costing an arm and a leg and being super overwhelming from a technical perspective. So, if you got a freelance site, if you wanna build a killer portfolio website, watch this video, which uh, we're gonna continue right after the intro. First things first, you decide you want a website, what do you need? You need three things. You need a URL, you need a domain name, the thing people type in to, to find your website. For instance, locationrebel.com, my domain name. Number two, 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 two. You need a hosting account. That's the place where all the information you put on your website lives. And so they're the ones that make it so that when you type your URL into the URL bar, it actually shows up and is on the internet. Uh, we recommend Bluehost for this. We've got a whole link below to our Bluehost review. There's a reason why we choose it, especially for beginners. They've got great support. It's super affordable. They've got a ton of features. So I highly recommend checking out Bluehost. Also, as a viewer or reader of Location Rebel, you get a little bit of a discount. So click below to go get set up there. And finally, number three, need to install WordPress and get a theme. So WordPress is the free software that's gonna make it super easy to build your website and make it look nice and pretty. And the theme is the thing that's gonna keep you from having to do a bunch of technical coding stuff to make it look pretty. And that's going to be the bulk of what we're going to talk about today. How to choose a theme, the right features to look for in a theme, uh, because there's thousands out there and it can be super overwhelming. And so we're here to help make that a little bit easier. So that's one less thing you have to worry about when you're starting your freelance business, because no matter what kind of business you start, probably gonna be a little stressful. You're going to be, you're going to be excited, but there's gonna be a lot going on. So we're going to try and minimize the, uh, the pain of the website with this video. Okay, so first up, there's two different types of WordPress themes. There's free themes and there's premium themes. And I'm going to tell you right now, and you might not want to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway, it's worth paying for a premium theme. You see, the free themes out there, they generally don't come with support. And since you're probably just getting started, you want someone that's going to be responsive and actually answer your questions. Uh, a lot of times they have free branding for the, the theme developer all over the site that you can't get rid of. You don't want that. You want to look professional. You want it to say your business name and your name and not, you know, from some random theme company. And also, there's a lot of features that premium themes usually have. They're going to make it much easier to customize and make your site look the way you want it to look rather than the stock way that a free theme has where you've got probably thousands of people that have installed this onto their websites and you don't want your site to look like thousands of other websites. You want it to be unique and personalized and look like you. And the good news is, Premium themes aren't that much money. If you're starting a business, you gotta be willing to invest at least a little bit, a little bit. You can get a great theme for 30 to $70, somewhere in that range. And if you watched our last video all about my one biggest productivity hack that I use personally, which is all about investing in things that make you say, ooh, that feels a little bit painful to pay for. Um, if the idea of paying $65 for a premium theme makes you say, ooh, oh, that seems like a lot of money. Go watch my last video. That'll hopefully motivate you to say, you know what? I should do this. It's for my life. It's for my business. It's worth it. And if you still don't want to pay for a premium theme, well, that's cool. Go ahead. Give it a shot with a free one. Uh, but don't say I didn't warn you. Now, once you've come to terms with the fact that you're gonna pay a little bit of money for this theme, then things can get a little bit overwhelming. So if you go to a site like ThemeForest, themeforest.com, that is the site where I generally buy all my themes because they have a 
crazy amount of variety and you'll generally find something that you like. Um, once you go to that site, you're going to be super overwhelmed because there's going to be a ton of options out there. So the next step you want to do is you got to think about what your site is. So for our purposes here, we're building a portfolio website. We're not building a blog. We're not building an online magazine. We're not building a business website. We're building a portfolio site to show off our work, to show off who we are and things like that. So fortunately, Theme Forest has a ton of options. They actually have over 1200 different portfolio themes. So you can basically say, I'm going to ignore everything else, push all that to the side and say portfolio themes. Let's take a look at it. So by now you've got your URL, you've got your hosting company, you've installed WordPress, you've narrowed it down to know that, okay, I need a portfolio theme. What else should you be looking for to make sure that this process is as easy as possible and you have a website that's going to look great more or less right out of the box. A couple things to keep in mind when you're looking for portfolio themes or really any themes for that matter. One, you want something that's responsive. There'll be a little box on Theme Forest that'll say responsive, yes or no. Essentially, all that means is that whether you look at something on your phone or on your desktop, everything is going to adjust so that it looks good. So if you open it up on a phone, it's sized correctly for the phone. If you open it up on a computer, then it's sized correctly for that. That's what responsive means. So these days, that's definitely something you want because when it comes to Google search rankings, that's one of the factors that they look at. If your site's not responsive and it looks great on a computer but looks horrible on a phone, they're not going to rank your site as well. So that's something that's kind of important. Another thing I found you want to avoid when you're just starting out with a portfolio website is you're going to see a lot of themes that are going to advertise 10 themes in one, 20 themes in one, drag and drop, super easy. That's not necessarily something you want. You don't necessarily want more options. And most of those themes that say they're, they're drag and drop and customizable and all that kind of stuff, they're more trouble than they're worth. Um, they're actually usually a lot more difficult to customize than they say they're gonna be. So what I would do is I would find a pretty simple theme that doesn't necessarily have all that customizability. And I'm talking customizability in terms of the homepage and sidebars, like all of these premium themes will have a certain level of customizability. You'll be able to add in your own logo, you'll be able to change the colors, you'll be able to change the font, you'll be able to change, you know, if you want a sidebar on this side of the screen or this side of the screen or no sidebar at all. So there's going to be a certain level of customizability. But the ones that advertise like a bajillion different homepage designs and things like that, nah, you don't need that. It's just going to weigh you down. It's going to confuse you. So don't worry about that. One other thing you want to look for these days is Gutenberg optimized. You're probably thinking, the heck is a Gutenberg? So when WordPress updated to WordPress 5.0, which they did about a year ago, they called that update Gutenberg. It was a huge update. It kind of changed the whole way WordPress worked. And so some themes work better with Gutenberg than others. And because even though the new update isn't necessarily my favorite, it's pretty much here to stay. So you wanna make sure that your theme is as compatible as possible. So I would generally recommend finding something that says Gutenberg optimized, and most of the newest and best themes will say that. When you're picking your portfolio site, assuming you wanna do freelance writing, you want to pick a site that, well, it's easy to read. And like I said, you'll be able to change the font and the spacing. They'll allow you to do all that pretty much no matter what premium theme you get. Uh, but when you're looking at the demos, look for something that really emphasizes the text and the writing. Um, when you go to Theme Forest, it's actually portfolio. It's going to be under creative themes. So that will also include like photography portfolios and things like that. Um, if you're doing a freelance services website, uh, you probably, you don't need that many photos. You're gonna want photos of yourself on your about page. It's gonna make it a lot easier to trust you if people can see that you're a real person, but you don't necessarily want a photography portfolio page where it's photos everywhere because there's no photos in writing. And if you're not a photographer, then that's gonna do you more harm than good. So look for a portfolio that's easy to read, that looks good, that maybe minimizes the photos unless of course you are a photographer and you want to work that angle into your site um, but I found a lot of freelance writers you know they kind of struggle with trying to figure out the photos so trying to find something that doesn't emphasize big giant high resolution images uh, that's going to be probably to your benefit so those are some of the biggest things to keep in mind when you're choosing a new theme, but I've got a few more for you just to make sure that you've done your due diligence and you're getting something that's gonna work really well and be pretty easy to use. So the first one is look for support features. So on the right-hand side, when you're looking at Theme Forest themes, right above where it says responsive question mark, it'll say documentation. And you wanna look for something that says well-documented. Uh, that means they're gonna have a ton of support resources that are gonna walk you through every single step 
of starting out and customizing this for your needs. Uh, the worst thing is to get a new theme and have it have no support and no documentation because then you're just left to say, well, how do I do this? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a technical person. I thought you said this was going to be easy. If it says well documented, then the process should be easy to set up. And if it's not, well, that's why there's a support email address with most of these themes. You want to make sure that that is included in the theme as well. So when you really hit a roadblock, you can go in, leave a comment, say, hey, theme developer, how do I do this? And a lot of them will even log into your site and go and do the changes for you. And if you find someone that's that committed to their theme, then you've really found a winner because it just makes the whole process a lot easier. You should also go test the theme on both desktop and mobile. Um, so all of the sites on ThemeForest, all of the themes, they have demo pages. So you can open up the demo page, you can see examples of all the different kind of styles of pages that they offer, uh, because the reality is half the people these days are gonna be reading something on their phone or on their tablet. So before you buy it, just go check and make sure you like the way that it looks uh, on both the computer and your phone. Again, certain things like font size and stuff like that can be customized, but you wanna make sure just generally you like the way that it comes across. And finally, the last thing I would do as far as due diligence is concerned is read the reviews. Generally, people on that site are pretty good about leaving honest reviews about their opinions. So if you see a lot of one, two, and three star reviews, then that's probably a theme you wanna stay away from. If you see a ton of five star reviews that are talking about how great the theme is and how great the support is, then that's probably going to be a good fit and you'll probably have a good experience with it. So it's really just about doing the obvious things. Make sure it's SEO optimized. Make sure it works with WordPress 5. Make sure you've checked the reviews. Um, all of those things, if you do that, if you like the way it looks, it's a portfolio site that's going to highlight your writing and your work, then you're going to be in good shape and you're going to end up with a freelance portfolio site that's going to look good and get your personality and your skills across. So if you head over to locationrebel.com slash a freelance writing portfolio, we've actually listed a bunch of the themes on ThemeForest that we think are great for your new portfolio site. So if you don't want to sift through 1,200 of them, then we've got half a dozen that we think are going to be a pretty good fit that we've seen our members have good success with. And if you're still at the point where you haven't quite started your freelance business and you want to and you want a little bit of extra help, locationrebel.com slash FWG. So there you're gonna get our freelance starter kit, which is essentially kind of the next steps. It's gonna help you figure out what steps you need to take to start establishing that business and to start thinking about yourself as a business so that you can get your first clients and get to the point where you're ready to set up your portfolio website. So check that out if you haven't already. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think a freelance writing portfolio is one of the best things you can have. This is kind of like your calling card. This is, as soon as you meet someone in person, you hand them your business card, they're gonna go back and they're gonna check out your website and be like, okay, does this person know how to write? Are they the real deal? Do I like them? Do we have stuff in common? Do they seem reliable? Your portfolio site should get all of that across. And so that's why I think it's essential these days to have one if you are a freelancer. So hopefully this video was helpful. Again, go check out the blog post as well because there's a ton of extra steps and tricks and tips on there that will be beneficial. And with that, I'm gonna stop rambling. I uh, leave for New York tomorrow. And by the time you watch this, I'll have been back from New York. So maybe we'll throw in some cool New York-y shots. I don't know. But uh, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and uh, we'll see you next time on the vlog. Remember, we got new videos every Monday and Thursday. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment and say hi. Tell me how much you like me or hate me or I don't know, tell me something. Just leave a comment <laughs> and I'm done. See you later. Peace.